Welcome to my review of Interview with a Vampire Season 1, Episode 3, Is My Very Nature That of the Devil? I reviewed Episodes 1 and 2 together back here. I really liked Episode 1. I found Episode 2 to be muddled and a little bit off-putting. Let's go ahead and start talking about the characters. Starting with David. Editing just here, I just wanted to step in and mention that the interviewer, who I have consistently called David throughout every single interview with a vampire thing I've done, his correct name is actually going to be Daniel. And I'm really sorry about that. I really should have caught it between the many times I reread this book, I re-listened to it on audio, all the times I watched the movie, and then the multiple times that I've watched this TV show. So I'm sorry it took me so long. I am going to continue to make that mistake throughout the entirety of this video. But going forward, any other interview with the vampire media I make, I will correctly call the interviewer Daniel. Thanks for your patience with me and I'll let you get back to the video. His scenes here in episode three really don't work for me. I continue to be confused about why we decided that this was the second interview. His interjections right now feel a little bit jarring to the flow of the overall story and where audiences were concerned about racial relations going on or about power dynamics and gay couples or about different disparities between different incomes. David comes in and he says some kind of thing and Lewis just tells him he's wrong without really like explaining it or giving it a scene that would give weight and meaning. And that kind of makes it feel like David is a character that AMC introduced to be like, hey yeah I see that issue but maybe like shut up about it and just watch the show. I guess it's fine but I don't really like to have something inserted like there that's basically telling me shut up your brain and just keep watching. From my perspective, there's like a lot of ways that AMC could have handled these problematic elements where it would have been fine. Maybe we really just are watching a abusive relationship and we're getting to see the highs and the lows of that. Or Lois could have talked about how like human relationships and vampire relationships are different. If you're a vampire and you have eternity before you potentially, then I would think you could come back from almost any act or action. Over time, things that were like grossly abusive and horrible in that moment might have like this very long term down the road purpose that makes it all work out in the wash. Book Lewis is such a thoughtful, reflective character. Even when he's recounting his story, he's kind of talking about how he felt at the time, how he couldn't stand Lestat, how after he and Claudia left Lestat, he realized that he had made some assumptions or made some judgments on him that weren't fair. And maybe he still would have or should have hated Lestat, but he hated him in those moments for the wrong reasons. We can see how eventually that kind of Lewis would go full circle. Even though this new TV show Lewis is different in a lot of ways, he could have maintained that core where like in the moment he and Lestat are not on the same page and they don't feel the same way about killing or about humanity as a whole. But now where he's the age that Lestat was back then, he can see where Lestat was coming from and how Lestat in his own way was trying to do what was best for him and make maybe not really reconnecting with how he felt at that younger age. So there were plenty of nuanced and interesting ways that we could have tackled this problematic element, but the way that Lewis just keeps dismissing all of David's interjections and just kind of like shoulder shrugging him away and David decides to just roll with it makes David's character feel superfluous. And I also find it kind of insulting to me as an audience member, so I'm not enjoying that element. On top of that, this second interview is supposed to be the real interview, which means that Lewis isn't holding back, he's 100% truthful with David. We are supposed to believe this narrative implicitly, but this frank denial of certain dynamics that we can obviously see does make me put the whole narrative into question because he never explains things. He never like breaks it down in a way that makes what he's saying make sense. And it just feels like another retcon from Lewis instead of the truth being divulged as is. So let's talk about Lewis. Lewis. I kind of enjoy Lewis's portrayal here in episode three. If you think about episode one and then you jump over to three, it kind of works for me. He's kind of exploring this element I feel like most young vampires would go through where they're a little bit conflicted about eating people, they find out they don't have to anymore, can't we kill the bad ones, can't we find some kind of standard of ethics or morals that will make all this seem 
better or an easier transition. And of course I love that we're bringing this element into Lewis's character because it's a huge factor in Book of Lewis. And he sees vampirism because of the need to drink human blood as like the ultimate in the selfish and evil creature. If we don't scratch the surface of these topics and at least put in some of that struggle, the character cannot be the same. And I liked the note that they put in here about like decreased energy when you feed only on animals, which reduces Lewis's libido and negatively impacts his relationship with Lestat. It gives Lestat a genuine reason to be frustrated that Lewis is only eating animals, which he very much needs in this version because this Lestat really doesn't mind otherwise. And too, I think it helps helps with the concept of Lewis like slowly being worn and ground down. He's kind of got like one foot in these two different worlds. On one side is like a vampiric world with all of this freedom and ability for him to chase whatever he wants and desires and like a true chance for him to be happy both with Lestat and like to be at a place in society he would otherwise never have access to. And then on the other side he has like long-standing duty and obligation to his family. He has a place in the community he has all these people who know him and rely on him and that he supports. He has this feeling of like importance that comes with all of those things and this desire to kind of like maintain it and prop up the community and maybe even give back. And at the same time this is happening, the world around him is changing and his profession is becoming less and less acceptable, which is putting him on the chopping block for the being the first person to lose this element of the business. All of which is driven by like prudes and racism and hypocrisy and a, and a million other things that have been pushing on Lewis all of his life and that he thought like he had escaped as a vampire, but just maintaining this facade in the human world and maintaining these connections continues to like expose him to it. And, like grind him down. Except now as a vampire he could fight back and like retaliate against all of these forces in a way that was never available to him when he was merely immortal. And he's like refraining from that but at the same time there's some conflict going on at home. There's like this tension between him and Lestat. Even though Lestat is accepting his choice and waiting for him to find a new equilibrium, he's not really happy about it and he's not really getting what he wants out of their relationship right now. So seeing all these things build and come to a point where they just sort of explode with Lewis lashing out against the one gratuitously racist and hateful character and has this moment of cathartic release that we share with Lewis even though we know this is going to lead him to a retaliatory tragedy in the end. And moving into Lestat, his characterization is still really hard to pin down for me right now, but I did have this one epiphany while watching episode three where they start in the beginning and he sort of lashes out at Lewis for his idea about choosing worthy victims and then him eventually just coming out and saying he doesn't want to kill people. Lestat is really cruel and aggressive for a minute there. And then in the next scene, he's saving Lewis from like his piano player leaving and now he's gonna go ahead and do his hunts on his own so that Lewis doesn't have to watch. Epically consider it. That quick heel turn like that, I mean I've seen it in people before but I just realized that when I see it it makes me very afraid of that person because it makes them really unpredictable. It makes me unsure of what they're really thinking or feeling. To me like that's such a red flag in a personality that when I meet those kind of people I like run for the hills right away and generally speak Speaking, don't understand when people hang out with them actually covers a lot of the issues I have with Lestat along with the Lewis Lestat relationship. It is sort of interesting to contemplate like where Lestat's coming from. He's got like all this vampiric age that Lewis doesn't have and he has like this upper class white privilege that we see come out every now and then that's been kind of cringe. When Lewis and Lestat first met and Lestat is like, I'm surprised as a black man you even got in the door here. Man it as a compliment but it totally came off sounding like him just being an arrogant awful prick and I hated him for it. Or even when he's like talking about like actual dollar equity versus sweat equity in a business and how people should be compensated for that. He's talking to the larger group at the poker table about how like he's always been on the investment side so he thinks money talks but he's talking like mentally in his head directly to Lewis about how despicable all these 
people are and how he deserves so much better. So it's just like this weird mashup of how much does Lestat understand and how much of his advice about like just breaking directly from humanity would that actually separate Lewis from this hatred? And like we've seen that Lewis and Lestat can't go everywhere they would like to go free of this kind of discrimination. Like Lewis has to pretend to be a chauffeur to go to the opera and all that kind of stuff. So it seems like even though Lestat's like let it all go and fully embrace our life together. I wouldn't solve everything and I'm like does he get it? Does he not get it? How true is what his advice is? How frustratingly like out of touch is the guy? And like some of it too is just how far removed is he from like having a human life or caring about any mortals at all? Book version Lestat cared a lot about his mother and cared a lot about his human boyfriend. Book Lestat's solution to any kind of loneliness issue or any kind of like connection to a mortal is to just turn them into a vampire. And he thinks like that's gonna solve everything for them and in fact it actually causes a bigger rift. When Lestat meets Lewis for the first time he wants to turn him into a vampire because he loves him. When he and Lewis are having relationship issues he thinks let's add another vampire in the mix. When that happy family is going to shit again he seeks out another guy and his intention is to add more people to the family. Like Lestat just goes out to the pool of mortals around him, finds one he likes and turns him and that's all always like the solution. And even though Lestat knows like withdrawing from mortality and making yourself powerful and rich is like the way to go, you can't just like do all of that if you don't have this one grounding experience first. I mean, I don't know. I'm definitely mixing book Lestat and TV show Lestat up into like a hodgepodge creation right now. And then lastly, I guess we have to talk a little bit about Antoinette and the TLDRs. I have no feelings about her, like at all. She's kind of just a character that's there. But uh, spoilers, I have watched all of season one at the time of recording this. So I know that she comes into play later. So we're just gonna go ahead and talk about her briefly here. I know she has a gender swap character from the books and while that does sort of erase an extra gay relationship that Lestat has, to me it's still fairly canon. Most of the vampires in the Vampire Chronicles have a fluid sexuality so it's like, uh, Lestat is bisexual, pansexual, great for him. And his early mortal relationship with another man is referenced in the TV show already so it's not like Lestat is only interested in Lewis and it's just this one very special boy. In fact right now as things stands it might be this one very special woman just because she has a great singing voice or whatever. I guess overall I'm happy about the change because the original interview with the vampire books really lacked like any feminine energy excluding Claudia. So if we want to have like a more balanced cast of characters we might need to gender swap a couple of people to make that work out. I guess it is vaguely interesting that Lewis seems a little bit threatened and upset by Lestat's relationship with Antoinette. Even though he tells David that it's perfectly understandable that Lestat was seeking somebody else because his libido was reduced and it was fine. The things that we see in the uh, back in time reflection have Lewis being upset and like hurt for the first time that Lestat seems to be like choosing someone else over him. Which is interesting because within the books. The vampires don't really care about vampire interactions with mortals. The only time they're really ever threatened is by other vampires coming into the mix. So as things stand right now with the Lestat Antoinette relationship where it looks like she's just a fleeting thing, she might even become a meal for Lestat at the end of the day. Lewis's hurt is unique but personally I really appreciate it because this is an element of the story where Lewis is still heavily connected to his humanity so he might legit legitimately see another human person as a threat. And I also really like it because Lewis doesn't show a lot of emotion or feeling or caring to Lestat. So sometimes like these moments where he's extremely hurt are the only ways that we ever realize that Lewis cares at all about what Lestat thinks or feels for him. So moving into thematic elements. 
This was a really meaty episode, and as a bottle episode, I'm really into it. Let's go ahead and start along with the ethics of killing. There is no Lewis character if he does not discuss the ethics of killing. I love the different ways that both Lewis and Lestat come at it. Like, Lewis is talking like a purely ethics, not the practicality of it, and Lestat comes in like crashing that bubble, talking about how stupid it is. Not necessarily because he's wrong ethically, but because it's just entirely impractical for them to go around looking for bad people to eat. First they would have to figure out what the standard was for bad enough to kill, and then they'd have to go around forever looking for those people. And then what counts as enough evidence to kill them for such a crime? Do they have to catch them in the act? Is it enough to know that they've done it in the past through reading their mind? Is it enough to know they're thinking about it? Are we talking about like thought crime now? There's so much fantasy and science fiction dedicated to each and every individual element of the argument that Lewis and Lestat have at the top third of the episode. I appreciated how quickly they ran through it all and summarized it. Also enjoyed watching Lestat and Lewis living their separate lives by their separate models and coming together at the end of the night to still have a relationship. It sort of is like talking about how each one of them has to overlook like what the other person perceives as shortcomings. Nom 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 nom. All of this is the philosophical troubles I want. And in some ways the TV show tackles it far better than Book Lewis ever did because Book Lewis is always like so esoteric about it and all about him and what he does. And he's already sort of decided that Lestat is awful. He's already kind of decided that he hates Lestat and has dismissed him like off to the side as a thing he doesn't even want in his life. Brushing off any culpability he has for living with someone who's doing the bad thing. TV show where Lestat and Lois have like a loving relationship and they come together and care about each other and support each other and stuff. They do have to deal with the ethical dilemma here in the middle that each of them has taken a different path and have to sort of navigate their relationship from that along with like exactly where their moral lines stand. I also like that in episode one we did get that mention about the little drink and how it's excruciatingly difficult for a vampire to drink from a human without killing them because it explains why that option is never available to them at this juncture. And at the end of the day, Lewis is unable to completely rein himself in. He doesn't just drink from a human, but he tortures that person, terrifies them, and leaves their brutalized corpse up as a warning to others. And if the goal of Lewis abstaining from human blood was to protect and save human lives of the people that he cares about in the community he originally hails from, his one act of brutal murder here arguably gets more people hurt and killed in retaliation for it than the entire pool of people Lestat's been killing all these months. Intense irony, the more you try to control something and protect something, the more things seem to spin out of control and you seem to get further away from your desired end result. Moving into themes of racism and homophobia, it fascinates me how much the show both is and is not about that. A lot of Lewis's negative interactions with society societies stem from either his race or his sexuality. And as a vampire, he's insulated from that to a certain degree, like he's able to ignore it or to get some kind of retaliation on people who treat him that kind of way. And Lestat often argues that he wouldn't even have to deal with it at that level if he would just intentionally accept his vampirism and step out of the human world entirely, which is yet to be seen. But at this juncture where he's got one foot in each world and this growth pressure and ability to fight back like never before, it is like a powder keg ready to go off. I suppose I spend a lot of time looking at the nature of the vampire specifically through the lens of how it relates to racism and homophobia. For example, Lewis continuing to try and maintain his family ties, continues to expose him to a lot of homophobia. Lewis and his family's relationship is very strained and it comes to a critical breaking point, but the strain comes, it seems like, almost entirely from the fact that Lewis has moved out of the family home and is living with Lestat in like a wife-only neighborhood. The family has correctly identified that Lewis has changed, there's something different about him, he only comes to visit at night, there's rumors about him and his business dealings that 
probably existed to a certain degree when Lewis was living at home, but now the family seems to pay more attention to and give more weight and authority than before. His mother has fully embraced the idea that Lewis has made a pact with the devil and is demonic, and to a certain degree his family is right. Lewis has changed. He's not a human. He is a vampire. He can only go out at night now. He is not aging like the rest of the family is. There are these things that are strange and weird and point him out as separate. But there is like an open question like how much of it is the actual magical demonic stuff, the stuff that's upsetting his family, and how much of it has to do with the fact that he is living with Lestat and in an assumed homosexual relationship. And in that way it feels like the vampirism is like a metaphor for being an outsider and othered from society, and how Lewis has sort of internalized some of his discrimination and how he's trying to handle and process it now that he's free of it because he's a vampire reminds me a lot of Claire from Nella Larson's Passing. For those who don't know, Passing is a narrative about this black woman Claire who is able to pass as a white woman and decides to do that and is living now married to a white supremacist as a white person. She meets up with a childhood friend who is involved in the Harlem Renaissance and the two of them sort of reacquaint each other and we get to know more about each of their various lifestyles. Claire and Lewis are very similar because Claire's passing as white. She's also freed herself from discrimination that she experienced in her past childhood years. They are both free to go and do as they please. They're able to be themselves in the largest way possible. But to continue to safely pass, Claire had to divorce herself from her entire society and community. Everyone she knew and loved she has to leave behind and pretend she doesn't know and never came from there. She no longer has those deep-rooted connections or those inherent understandings she once enjoyed when she was a member of the black community. And Lewis seems to be going through this same sort of um, shake-up in his own life where he would have to leave his sister and his nieces and nephews and his mother and all these people that he's cared for and loved and had deep connections with all his life. And these inherent understandings and common experiences they shared, he has to pretend he never had them. So while Claire and Lewis's life is more free than it has ever been, it's also more isolated and lonely than they've been previously. It's sort of signaling to me because in passing, when Claire reconnects with her childhood friends and family and starts hanging out with them again, she becomes happier than she had ever been in her more quote-unquote free lifestyle, but it also is the beginning of her demise. And I'm wondering if we're going to see the same parts here play out with Lewis, where he's finally able to be free and do his own thing and get vengeance on this guy who was awful to him, but at the same time by doing that he's caused this retaliation over here that's making all of his community suffer in a way because of him and his bad temper. If we're going to keep seeing that part of himself continually to pull him back into society and continue to sort of like drag him down further, self-destructive funk. I really liked episode three and it closes with us getting introduced to Claudia. I'm going to put episodes four and five together so we get all of Claudia together in one big chunk. I not wait to talk about her. But I think this was a great little breaking, something's got to give point, an excellent focus on Lewis as a philosophical and ethical moral being, and a great little encapsulation of a lot of insights and things combining together in a way that makes these changes feel new and fresh while maintaining that core of who Lewis is. I'm definitely more hopeful for the show, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next time about what happens in 4 and 5. If you're enjoying these vampire reviews, please leave me a vampire emoji in those comments down below. And as always, keep reading. Bye!